Welcome to Economics 1723 Capital Markets. This is the uh, lecture module for Lecture 11 on the Law of Iterated Expectations. Welcome, everybody. So we're going to be talking about um, the link now between uh, the returns on stocks from one period to the next and the price levels of those stocks. That's a big theme of the course uh, in this part of the course. And the law of iterated expectations is a mathematical result that helps us understand the connections between returns and prices. So the, the background question here is what does market efficiency imply for the levels of prices? Suppose we've uh, done an extensive empirical analysis uh, along the lines discussed in lecture and we found that returns are unpredictable. Well, does that imply that prices equal fundamental value in some sense? And if so, what is the connection? So now I'm going to state you the key uh, mathematical result that we need uh, here, which is the law of iterated expectations. And I'll start by defining the rational expectation, or sometimes called mathematical expectation, of a random variable. That's just a probability-weighted average of the different possible outcomes or realizations of the variable. So if we have a random variable which we call x, that can take values x1, x2, and so on up to xn, then <clears throat> the expectation of x, the rational or mathematical expectation of x, is a probability weighted average of all the different outcomes. So pi1 is the probability of outcome 1, and then you get value x1, and so on through all the different possible uh, scenarios until we get to pi n, the probability of the nth outcome. Now, uh, you notice that inside this uh, <coughs> expectation box here, I've written a vertical line, and then there's the letter i. And this is to indicate that the expectation is taken conditional on some information uh, that we have, and or a set of information, and we write that uh, information set as i. So, in other words, these probabilities that appear on the right-hand side have been calculated using whatever information is in the information set. Now what we're going to do is consider two different information sets, call them H and I, where H is included in I. That's to say H is a smaller set of information than I, a strict subset of I. Okay, so for example, H might be knowledge that the Q2 revenues of Facebook lie somewhere between $1 billion and $2 billion. Maybe somebody tipped you off that that's the case. Maybe I is the exact number for the Q2 revenues of Facebook. And obviously, if you know the exact number, then you know whether or not the revenues lie between 1 billion and 2 billion, and thus H is included in I. And finally, X then is some variable that might be affected by the revenues of Facebook, for example, the stock price of Facebook. All right, so <clears throat> with these definitions, the law of iterated expectations, or LIE, says the following, and uh, try not to be too put off by the notation here. Let's start with the first line. The expectation of x given h is the same as the expectation given h of the expectation of x given i. In other words, given the smaller information set h, you're going to come up with the same answer whether you try to predict x, the ultimate variable of interest, or whether you simply try to predict the forecast of x, the rational forecast of x, given the superior information set i. So predicting the future outcome is the same as predicting your future forecast when you have better information. Those two are really the same thing if you're forecasting rationally. Now maybe this will be more intuitive if we um, essentially subtract the left-hand side from the right-hand side and write this as the expectation, conditional on h, of the difference between the expectation given i and the variable itself is zero. All right, what does that mean? Well, what is this thing here? The difference between the forecast given i and the, and the variable itself, that's the mistake that you're going to make in your forecast uh, based on information set i. And so this is predicting a mistake, and the law of iterated expectation says you cannot predict a mistake uh, if you have less information available. You know that you will make a mistake, but you can't predict the direction. You're just as likely to be wrong in one direction as another. So, so on average, if we take the mathematical expectation, the probability weighted average of these mistakes, it's going to be zero. 
Okay, now we can write this um, in a way that may be a little bit less cumbersome than all these H's and I's. Let's assume that as time unfolds, the information we have at time little t is less than the information that we have at time t plus 1, which is less than the information we have at time t plus 2, and so on. In other words, we keep adding information, but we never forget anything. Let's use a more compact notation. Let's write E sub t x to denote the expectation of x conditional on the information at time t. And then if we say that h is the information we have at time t, and i is the information we have at time t plus 1, then we can say the expectation at t of x is the expectation at t of the expectation of t plus 1 of x. In other words, if you've got a sequence of these e's with dates, we can just drop out, we can cancel out all the future e's because the expectation of these future e's is the same as the expectation of x today. Or equivalently, we can say that the expectation at t of the mistake we're going to make at t plus 1 is 0. We cannot predict our own future mistakes if we're rational forecasters. Now let me give you an example of this in the context of a simple coin tossing example. So we've talked about this one before. We're going to toss two coins. Time t is before we toss any. Time t plus 1 is after we've tossed one coin. And time t plus 2 is after we've tossed two coins. And we're going to count the number of heads we get. We're going to get either two heads, one head, or zero heads. This is the event tree. And uh, the probabilities, um, the probability from the initial point of view of getting two heads is one quarter. And the one half chance of getting one head and a one-quarter chance of getting zero heads. Now, um, what are these numbers here? These numbers represent the expectations at each node of the final number of heads. So if we're at this node, then the expectation of the final number of heads is three halves, or one and a half, because there's a half chance from here of getting one, and a half chance from here of getting two, so the average is one and a half. Similarly, at this node, the expectation of the final number is one half, because we have a one half chance of getting one, one half chance of getting zero, the average is one half. If we now go all the way back here and take the expectation at the beginning, we're going to get the number one. Now, the law of iterated expectations is simply the statement that we get one whether we calculate the average of these numbers using these probabilities, or whether we calculate the average of these numbers using these probabilities. In other words, forecasting our future forecasts, which is what we're doing here, is the same as forecasting the future outcomes if our forecasts are rational. So in the coin tossing example, ETX is one quarter times two plus a half times one plus a quarter times zero, that's one. The expectation at T plus one after you've tossed one coin, X is either three halves or one half, the expectation at the beginning of that et plus 1 of x is the probability of 3 halves, which is a half, um, so 1 half times 3 halves plus 1 half times 1 half, that's 1. All right, so we're going to get 1 when we calculate this and 1 when we calculate this. They're the same. Alternatively, we could try to compute the, the expectation of the mistake we're going to make and with probability one-half, the mistake will be positive a half, and with probability one-half, the mistake will be a negative a half, so the average of that is zero. If we look back at the figure, if we try to predict our future mistake, we're standing here, we're looking at our future mistakes, the mistake is either plus a half, if we go up either of these nodes, or it's minus a half if we uh, go um, down. Uh, one of these nodes, and uh, th th those are going to cancel out, they're of equal probability, so the expected mistake is zero. Okay, now um, we're going to say more about this in lecture, but I just want to emphasize that the law of iterated expectations connects fundamental value with unpredictable returns. So suppose an asset's price equals the rational expectation of its payoff, let's call that the fundamental value then it equals the rational expectation of its own future values. Price changes are caused only by the arrival of new information and are therefore unpredictable, which gives us the statement that returns are unpredictable. So 
uh, way to say this is if you're rational, you can't predict how you will change your mind in the future. And with this model of prices, uh, price changes are changes of mind based on new information, so they have to be unpredictable. Now, we've got to be a little careful in applying this to financial markets, because in fin financial markets we also have discounting and risk adjustment. So the correct statement is that efficient market prices equal expected payoffs discounted over time and adjusted for risk. Then we would say that in an efficient market only two things move prices. The first is investors getting the, the normal return, the compensation for the time value of money and, and any risk they're taking. Uh, but beyond that, the only other thing that moves prices is new information about cash flows or interest rates or risk, anything that's relevant to the asset price. And that new information, by definition, is unpredictable if investors are rational. So thank you, and I'll uh, see you in class.